Yeah, hello. Welcome from my side to this uh, workshop. I'm happy to be here and to go one step further from what Adina has told you. So we jump back to the Glamour's project and I zoom a bit into the initiatives and what we have learned from them uh, for transition towards sustainability or towards a good life for all, as I would like to call it. Uh, you will see that some slides you've already seen by Adina, so I can jump over them, but it might also be a good repetition. So I'll make a short intro. This is really short because Adina already told you what we have done in the project in our empirical work packages, and then talk a bit about some things we have done within the sustainability initiatives. There was a case study exchange meeting last year in Romania. Then I'll talk a bit more about the interviews and the results we had there, focus groups only slightly, as Adina already gave you some results. And then some thoughts about how this sustainability initiatives can uh, strengthen the, the transformation towards a good life for all. And Andrew, three questions to you. Okay, so we had two empirical work packages in, in or still have in the Glamour's project, it's four and five. The work package four is concentrating on uh, the case study regions, the seven we have, and the work package five is zooming into the initiatives within the regions. And I'm talking about work package five right now. And the aim of this work package was and is to find out what are the determinants that allow people to engage in, in initiatives and also to live a sustainable lifestyle. Because very often this is connected, being engaged in initiatives and <coughs> living more sustainably than the average persons do in the same area, I would say. And also what are barriers, obstacles to spread the alternative initiatives, so the lifestyles from niche to regime and landscape level. Uh, and also see what this engagement in initiative and my change of my lifestyle impacts on myself, on my well-being and my quality of life, um, and also on my, my environmental footprint. You have seen this already. We have these seven case study regions. Uh, all of them address at least one, I would rather say two, of our six domains we look into. So food, energy, mobility, housing, and so on. I'll give you a um, a short overview later on. And what we have done within our initiatives was first we did a system analysis. We tried to understand the initiatives, to, to describe them, to their, their history, how did they kind of came into being, who were the, the key actors who started the initiatives, why did they do it, what was their aims, what are their problems. So really understand how they came into being and, and what is the life of an initiative. Uh, second, what we did, what, what I think was quite... Um, is this a, you no. have to point there, in it, in it. you have to point to oh, the computer. No. computer. Ah, oh, that's it. I think Sorry. it's good. <laughs> is this act as a network, networks mapping? <laughs> what we've done is, together with key stakeholders, draw the, net, uh, the network, we called it NetMap, because this was the, met, uh, the, met, the method we used is called NetMap, draw together with key stakeholders the network of an initiative. Who are the key actors? How are they linked to each other by giving support, information, or also negative links? How high is their influence concerning the development of the initiatives? And we learned a lot from this, uh, that there is differences between cultures in different countries. Uh, yeah, for instance, as I'm from Austria, in Austria there is a uh, lot is going via friendship. And very often men sitting together for a beer or a wine after a meeting and then starting, starting a business, I would say, which is different in other countries. So this was quite interesting. And very often uh, the, the birth of an initiative depends on one or two or three front runners or pioneers of change who really sacrificed their life, I would say, to, to start this initiative. Then we had, as Adina already said, the in-depth interviews that more than 100 <coughs> altogether, lasting from about one to one and a half hours. The focus groups, we had in each uh, case study two focus groups on the regional level and one on the initiative level. And I'm only talking about the, the latter one. We also had the backcasting. Jaco will talk about, uh, more about this and uh, this case study exchange meeting. So this is what you've already seen. Um, the initiatives in the seven case study regions. So you see in Galicia and Spain we had, for instance, two initiatives. In, in Romania there were three, in Austria there were two, um, Central Germany one, uh, also one in Scotland and in Italy and in uh, The Hague, Rotterdam, here we had three repair cafes and one uh, energy cooperative. And what is really interesting uh, is that you see here, you see the initiatives and our six domains in, in, in Glamours that 
they all address at least one, as I said before, and um, food was an, an issue nearly everywhere, not in the energy uh, cooperative, of course, um, and also not in the Work Smart Initiative in, in Scotland, but food is really important and also mobility and then consumption of manufactured products. And later on we will see that the reason why people change their lifestyles or engage in sustainability initiatives come from food and mobility issues, because people are not satisfied with the given situation or because they know that within food and mobility a lot of resources are used. And third, because it's also quite easy to change it. To build a new house, it's a long thing and this is, once I have one, I'm not going to change it soon, but what I eat, I can change from one day to the other. And also, my mobility pattern can be changed quite easily. So these are, are I would say, easy starts for people to engage or to live in a sustainable way. Uh, oh, sorry, I wanted to go back. Uh, our initiatives were extremely diverse, being really internationally embedded like transition towns to super locally, really like small initiatives in a, in a little area. Um, some wanted to grow further, some wanted to keep steady and stay where they are right now. Um, most of them were bottom-up initiatives, but not all. One, the UK one, was a top-down government-led initiative, and in Austria it was a mixture between bottom-up and top-down, for instance. So it, it's not always the case that sustainability initiatives start from the grassroots. Um, the values that were important in initiatives were very diverse, but the most important ones were usually the social ones. More important than environmental ones. So it's not uh, out due to environmental reasons that people engage, but rather to, due to social. They want to be part of a group, embedded in a group, start new relations, uh, feel a new purpose, what they can do in their life. And it's more a side effect that they reduce their footprint, I would say, and it's not the main reason. Yeah. Um, and what we have done last year, this was not originally planned in a description of work, but it, it emerged from some meetings we had. We had a, a super interesting meeting in Timisoara where people, the stakeholders from the different initiatives <coughs> met. About 30 people met, and within a three days open space interactive format, they co-produced knowledge, I would say, in a, real, in a real sense, in a transdisciplinary sense. Stakeholders learn from researchers, and researchers we learn from the stakeholders. What can we do together to strengthen a transition towards a good life for everybody? Uh, yeah. You see the happy bunch of people there in Romania, and some selected outcomes, which I think is interesting also to give back to the European Commission, is what we could see that there is a collective need and demand for more exchange among different projects within Europe, and more dialogue on the same level, not us researchers, you know, talking from the top down to the normal people, but meeting each other on the same eye level, we would say, and, and, and talk about uh, our needs, our demands, and what we really want to change. Um, open spaces where people uh, feel trust and feel secure to really talk from their heart and from their inner. And this is something European Commission could really do. Uh, and one important outcome is also people wanted to explore what other initiatives did to overcome the barriers and problems they had, and thus to learn from each other and sharing good practices and success factors. For the co focus group here, I think, Alina, you pretty much said uh, what is here, the highlights, so I would not repeat it, um, but what might be interesting is what did members of initiatives say would drive to engage in initiatives and to live sustainably. As I already said, it's because they want to change something in the, in the food and mobility areas. And this is quite easy to do. Uh, for mobility, it depends a bit whether there is public transport and uh, alternative options. But for food, we all can, can switch to vegetarian or vegan from one moment to the other if we want. Yeah, there is lots of, of options out there. And then it was also important that uh, the initiative members thought when they start to live a sustainable lifestyle, then they are more aut autonomous. They, can, they are not so dependent on others and can choose more freely uh, what they want to do. It's, it's more a self-determined lifestyle than doing as all the others do. Yeah? And what would be a barrier for a, a highly engaged person 
to live sustainably, and this is also what, what, what Adina already said, one barrier is time. Uh, usually, people who engage in initiatives are super engaged in general, so they lack time anyway for nearly everything. And then if they, in addition, live more sustainably than they do already, this costs more time to go to the organic pharma instead of the supermarket, uh, to use a bicycle instead of a car and so on. So this is a barrier for people within initiatives and outside. And um, another one, what you already heard, is that sometimes we are strongly driven by extrinsic motivation. This is what our neoliberal economic system kind of tells us in the commercials and the media and so on. So, some results from the inter interviews. Um, Again, here we, from the 105 interviews, about 60, 65 were interviews with people being members of initiatives. The rest were people not being members. And here these are results from members of initiatives. Uh, as I already said, motivations to join initiatives is not only about pro-environmental issues, rather not, but about social effects. And people, uh, this is then the, already the second part, people in initiatives uh, said that they felt well, that their well-being was increased by being a member, although their time, uh, their free time was less, because they were part of a group, they had fun, they were among like-minded people, didn't feel so, so alien-like, because they, they lived in another way than the mainstream. Um, and this is main reasons to, to engage in, in, in sustainability initiatives. Yeah, and what was also interesting, this was especially true for, for initiatives that uh, require radical changes, like in Romania, people started to live in eco-villages, so they changed their life totally, uh, gave their jobs away, moved from the city to the countryside, and so on. And they said in the beginning, their well-being level decreased, but when they realized that it make, made sense to them to live there in this eco-village, and it gave them a purpose in life, their well-being level increased again, and here we talk about eudaimonic well-being instead of hedonic. So although the pleasure and joy went down in the beginning, the, the meaning in life was increased, and so this eudaimonic uh, way of being was, was much higher than before, this well-being. And this is maybe the form of well-being which is somehow linked to intrinsic values and also to sustainability in the end. It's not only about joy and pleasure, because living sustainably means maybe to sacrifice the one thing or the other. But in the end, it makes sense. And this is what, what increased the well-being in the long run. Um, what is maybe also important is that it is not the case that people, mostly not the case, uh, engage in initiatives and then change their lifestyles, but the other way around. They started to change their lifestyles and looked for something where they can engage. So this is, uh, yeah, first engagement, then change of lifestyle. And this means uh, engaging in, in initiatives is rather still a niche program and not uh, appropriate for everybody. So my question would be also to you, can there be something like a change of lifestyle without being engaged in initiatives? Where well, I do not have an answer. So the final slides is now, uh, I was asked by Jaco to say something about the role of initiatives uh, for the transition to sustainable lifestyles or also in the diffusion of sustainable lifestyles. And what uh, we can say so far, and thank you about, I think the slides I, I got from you, is what I already said before. Um, the green people are those that live more sustainably than others, that are somehow front runners, pioneers of change, like more service average lifestyles. And we know that there are people out in our societies who try to live sustainably and who also engage themselves in initiatives. They act as, niche, as, as niche, niches. And from transition theory, we know uh, niches can become mainstream if there are enough people doing what the frontrunners do and if the regime level, the frame conditions allow enough people to live in a, in a more sustainable way. So the question would now be, well, this is happening. The green people are already engaging themselves in initiatives, but how can we get the others, the second wave, so to say, the here black ones, uh, to live more sustainably? And maybe to reduce the awareness behavior gap, because 
awareness is here, at least in the northern uh, and western countries. Awareness that the life we live can't go on forever. We have to change something. But there is a gap between this awareness and knowledge and our behavior. And how can we overcome this? Also still an open question. Um, so what we can say is that um, the initiatives are mostly articulations of people who are not satisfied with the existing system, but not only. As I said, initiatives can also be uh, started top-down or from uh, uh, local or regional government levels. Um, the initiative and the lifestyle choices can become part of a movement that trigger changes in existing practices like different forms of mobility, of, of nutrition, of food, of uh, energy use, and so on. But of course, they are also very much influenced, these niches and initiatives, by the regimes. And if the regime, at least in the middle run, is not changing, then the niches stay niches. They won't get mainstream. So we need some change also from the top down or from the regime level in order to have a real transition towards sustainability. The initiatives are good examples for us for, for living more sustainably, but they only attract, as I said, a limited share of population. And to attract more, I think, or we do think, from first results from the Climate Project, we need change frame conditions and the different governance level from local, I would say, to the European Union to set the frame conditions right that also other people who are not front runners <coughs> can live in another way more easily, that they, do, that they do not have to sacrifice too much. And I also do think, or we do think, that uh, intermediaries play a role. This is such a, a level in between. This can be regional managers, associations like the Transition Town Network or the Eco Village Network, um, NGOs, facilitators, who have the power also to help those willing to engage that they do so. To, without them really being a member of initiatives and do, and do, and do a lot. Yeah? So maybe, maybe open spaces where they can meet and just learn from each other and talk about the problems they have or the interpersonal conflicts when they try to live in a sustainable way. Usually you have conflicts, it's not that easy. And, uh, in, and the choices, principles and social norms underlying a membership uh, for in sustainability initiatives could be much better integrated in all policies. It can be environmental policies, social policies, and so on. So my last uh, slide is some conclusions and then three questions to you. Um, as I already said, for people who have adopted the uh, sustainable lifestyles, the sustainable choices get routine. For those who have not started, it's not so easy to start if the frame conditions are not set or facilitate their choices to change, I would say. Then the initiatives provide platforms to practice more sustainable behaviors and lifestyles to exchange and to learn from each other. Usually, to change, lifestyles take longer time. This doesn't go from one minute to the other. Um, the membership definitely increases well-being. Engaging in, in, in sustainability initiatives increases well-being, hedonic as well as eudaimonic. Uh, but we need more support if we want more people to engage in initiatives and to change, or rather to change their lifestyle. So, government could only want to extend regulations, communications, or incentives to stimulate initiatives, the underlying norms and principles. They could decrease taxes, subsidies that foster still unsustainable practices, such as uh, subsidies for fossil fuels, for in Austria, people get money if they commute to work by car and not by public transport. This is absolutely not sustainable. Uh, organic food can be subsidized more and so on. So you can stop unsustainable ta uh, taxes and subsidies that foster unsustainable <coughs> behavior, increase um, taxes and subsidies supporting um, sustainable behavior. But also, uh, this is maybe really as well important as this economic uh, and command and control instruments is initiate de debate, public and political debate on the economic logic of our system. Are we re do we really need growth, although it might be green, or are we rather living, or should we rather live in a degrowth world, but also the social logic of our system and the new system where we all can have a good life. So, uh, so yeah, opening rooms for debate. So to finalize my questions to you would be, where do you think to transition start, bottom up or top down, or both? 
And when we think of what could governments do, what exactly should they do on local levels, on regional and national, to support the transition towards sustainability? And third, uh, we talked a lot about values already and intrinsic motivations. Is something like an inner change, a change of my, my values, my emotions, my belief systems important in order to have a change outside of my behavior? And what, where is the start? In, in or out? Okay, thank you very much for your attention.